Okay guys, what's up? Back again with another video. This episode I'm going to show you how to work with APIs to actually search for stuff and then use a form to actually enable the user to search for stuff also. Okay guys, so yeah, we actually know how to access the APIs pretty good now. Um, if you watched the last two episodes and so we can actually get information from API's and you know put it on our website like we did here and actually make some really cool stuff but now I want to show you how to um, actually search for stuff because right here we have a search um, we have the ability to search for stuff on this API and um, so we're gonna be able to search for stuff with this uh, request okay but and more, more importantly we're gonna enable the user to search for stuff with a form okay so they're gonna be able to type in like um, keywords into a um, an input box and then they can press submit and then it'll search for stuff using our uh, request and all that fun stuff okay so we're gonna get right into that right now so if we go to the search part right here they have you know information on how to use the search uh, part of the API so if we just copy this link here for uh, searching for photos we just copy that up to the question mark uh, paste that right there so that will enable us to search now and so let's just get rid of this other one here uh, actually no we'll get rid of this one Okay, and then we'll uh, we'll copy it to this one. Okay, so that will enable us to search. We already have our client ID, and let's see what other parameters we need. Okay, so we need a query parameter. It looks like it's not optional, so we need that. So let's go ahead and add it. So we'll do and for amp, uh, which is ampersand, and then we type query because that's the name of the parameter, as you can see here, and the equal sign, and then after the equal sign, of course, that's what we put for the parameter value. So we're gonna put um, just as an example, we'll do sun to print everything that's related to suns I guess we're gonna be searching for sun okay but also we have different uh, parameters we could put we could put uh, you know page number how many uh, pictures per page and stuff like that okay so that's pretty cool and these are all optional so we're just gonna leave it how it is um, like this where we're just searching for one query or search term basically okay so um, yeah I mean that should work so it's actually before we actually work on the route Let's actually copy this and see what it uh, gives us. Okay, so it does work. It gives us some data here. That's pretty cool. So it looks like it's just more picture data, I guess. It's out of a results um, array uh, array of objects, and there's objects which are pictures. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so it's just like last episode, I guess, except the structure is a little different. Like last time, it was an array here, and then the objects were inside of that. But this time, there's an object that holds this array this which holds objects but it's a little different but we'll be working with that in a second don't worry about all that but anyway so now that we actually know that the you know the API um, this you know request to link works let's actually incorporate it into what we have so far okay cool so let's actually um, check and see if we go to pictures let's reload here let's see what happens so it says these are all the pictures on page one and then nothing shows up and that's weird because you know we already have it set up so that we send the data from the request to that page and then it displays the data right but remember what I showed you was that the data is displayed different oh, wait that's the old one I showed you that the data was displayed differently now we have this results thing so it's gonna be a little different so if we for example if we want to get the the um, the date that is created at right right here right here so if you want to get that let's copy this path let's see the difference so if we copy this path and put it down here we see that the path is a little different from last time. So before you had pick data, uh, the index, and then created at, which is the variable or whatever. Um, but here we have results index and then created at. Oops. So it's a little different as you can see. So basically what we need to do is put results in front of everything like this. So let me show you. So we're going to go to each one and put dot results. And that should fix that. Dot results for this one. Dot results for this one. Uh, dot results for this one. So basically, we're just ac uh, accessing the data like we did last time, but the path has a little different, so we just need to change it a little bit. Pretty simple. Uh, so let's reload here. Nothing is showing up. Uh, hopefully, we did this correctly. <laughs> that would be bad if we didn't. Um, oh, I see. Maybe we should get the pick data dot results dot length because, as you can see here. We're getting our collection of objects, or in this case, the objects will be the pictures, of course. So all of the objects or the pictures are going to be found in the results array, right? But before we looked inside of pick data, we looked for the whole thing. That's where the um, 
that's where the uh, the picture objects were inside of. But now it's inside of the result, so we need to do pick data dot results dot length because we're looking at the length of the results array, not the length of the pick data array. Okay, um, array of objects. You know. So hopefully you understand that little difference. So let's reload now, and we have an error here. Um, cannot read pop property URLs of undefined. Where is that? Uh, okay, so it just wants us to fix this. So results. We just need to keep adding stuff. Let's see. Results, 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 results. I think I got all of them right. Looks like it. Okay, so let's try doing it now. And there we go. So it shows all of them. Awesome. That's really cool. So it shows all of the results for sun, it looks like, because these all have suns in them, it looks like. So let's, let's try another example so we can make sure it works, like flower. We're going to search for flower. So our query will be flower. So, oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so so yeah, it shows flowers. That's really cool, as you can see here. So that's how that works. Um, so we can also change the page number down here too. So we'll change it to fifty, for example. Now, uh, oh, it didn't change the. It didn't uh, search for on page fifty because we have to change it up here too, inside the query. So and page is equal to fifty. So now it'll display the pictures from fifty. If we reload here. There you go, so we get flowers. That's awesome, okay? So as you can see, we have been uh, successfully been able to actually search for, you know, um, anything, right? So now what we want to do to make this even more awesome in advance, we could make it so the user can actually type in the query um, that they want to search for, okay? So we can do that by making a form, you know, like a... Um, you know like a login page that's a form where you type in your username and password we're gonna make a form like a search bar basically that's what we're gonna make okay so they're gonna be able to type in the query the you know the thing they want to search for and then it'll be able to do the results and search for the results for them basically it's gonna plug that result it's gonna plug their search term into here and then it's gonna run the request for them okay so um, it's better to show you so let's actually do this so what we want to do is actually make a page here uh, we'll actually make a route first so we're going to make a route that's going to hold our um, our search form basically so we'll just call it um, search because it'll be searching for something and then we'll get a callback function of course because that's what we need so yeah this is going to be the route that holds our um, our searching form so they can search for pictures right uh, pretty simple uh, res dot uh, render and we'll make a search page so let's go ahead and do that um, search Dot ejs there we go so this will hold our form basically okay so let's go ahead and include our um, our header and our uh, footer we'll just copy it because I'm lazy there we go awesome okay so in, in between that of course we're gonna have our form but let's make sure it works first so we'll go to uh, localhost search and there you go so we're, we're here so let's actually add something here uh, search for any uh, or how about this? Enter a search term and press submit to search for photos. Something like that, right? So now, then it says enter a search term and press submit to search for photos. So that works pretty cool. And um, so let's actually add an input now so we, they can actually input stuff. So actually, no, we'll go to Bootstrap. So then if we go to Bootstrap, we can see there's templates we could use for a search form. They have their own templates here. So if we go to uh, form right here, forms, we can copy this one right here. So we could use this as a template. And the reason I'm doing that is because, you know, the regular um, input that comes with HTML is actually kind of ugly. So we're going to use the bootstrap one. So it looks all nice and pretty. Okay. So let's get rid of all this needless stuff. We don't need this one right here. Uh, let's reload, see what it looks like. Looks awesome. Okay. Um, so let's get rid of these. Uh, we don't need check me out. We don't need that one. And then we don't need that uh, submit. We need that for sure. Um, we'll put this here. Uh, search. Like that. Looks pretty cool. Enter email. We'll change that to example uh, sun. Okay, so that'd be an example search term they could put. Okay, cool. And that will be the submit button. Search term. It looks good to me, right, guys? Hopefully, it looks good to you. So, what we want them to be able to do is search for like flowers, okay? And then press submit. And then, what it's going to do is actually, um, you know, run this request that we did here, okay? It's going to be able to do that for them, okay? And uh, yeah, so as you can see here, it says, you, uh, please include at. So, we need to change this from an at 
or change the uh, what's it called the type of it to just um, text I believe so let's change that so yeah now it's just a simple text thing so now we can submit it like that and as you can see look very closely if we, once we uh, let's go back here once we submit this look what happens to the URL it adds a query sign here so that means um, the form whenever we submit the form it's automatically thinking we might do a query right so if we want to do a query for sure we need to add some stuff here so we'll do action. So this is going to be the um, the query um, route that's going to be run whenever we um, click submit. So we'll do slash picks. Okay. So that's basically the route that will run whenever we do this. So let's reload here. Okay. So if you type something in, boom, it says slash picks question mark, right? So that's exactly what we want, right? That's amazing. Because if we go back here, that's exactly what our query route is, is slash picks. So that works perfectly, right? Um, so that's going to be good. So we'll also we have to get the thing that they're searching to go up there also up here um, when we click submit because what we want to do is pass the thing they're searching for inside this input box to our query that we're going to be searching for. Okay, so you'll, you'll see in a second. So what we need to do to enable that, let's just get rid of all this stupid crap right here. This is all junk. Uh, we need that probably. Um, what we need to do is add name here. So name. So this will be the name of the variable, basically that this is going to be that the value of whatever we put in here is going to be stored in. Okay, so if we search flowers, for example, that flowers value is going to be stored in whatever name we choose here inside of the variable of whatever we choose here. So we're going to call it uh, search term, for example. Okay, so if we go back here now, uh, we also need to add this here, the method. Okay, so this is the method that is going to happen whenever we click submit. Also, so we're going to do git. Okay. Because we're it's a HTTP HTTP request and we're just getting something okay. Don't worry about that. It's not too advanced. We we're gonna go over this in the future probably. So just don't worry about it. But anyway, so make sure you have these two things here: the action, which is very important. You might not even need to have this one. You don't need it probably, but you should still probably have it. But this one's very important, of course, because this is the route that's gonna be run whenever we click submit. And yeah, so name is of course it's gonna be the name of the variable that the value of this is gonna be stored in. So let's actually try this out. Let's reload here, and we'll type something like sun. Okay, so we'll click submit, and now look what we did up here. It says slash picks question mark search term is equal to sun. Okay, so what we did is we passed the variable search term with the value of sun into that route. Okay, so now what we can do is go back to this route here and access that variable that we just passed to this route. Okay, so we can do it like this. So we can store it in a value. So we'll, we'll store it in a var call, called um, uh, we'll just call it search term also. We'll give it a capital T so we can know the difference. So then if you want to access that, we could do rec uh, dot query instead of params. Remember, if we're accessing a parameter, we would do params usually. But now we're going to do rec dot query dot and then the name of the variable. So search term. So now if we did that correctly, um, that value that we um, searched should be stored in this variable here. So let's actually print out this variable just so we can figure out if it worked or not. Uh, search term like that. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's reload just to make sure it's all new. We'll call we'll call um, rainbow. We'll search for rainbow. Submit. Now it's going to uh, add that to the query. Okay. So now we should be able to access this, and it's going to run this route automatically because we did. Because what it did is it took us to the slash picks route. So that means it should have run this route now. So if we go ahead and look in our console, it prints out rainbow because what we did is we printed out the search term that we took from the query. Okay, from up here, basically. Okay. So I know that's a lot, but it's a pretty simple concept. Basically, we're just taking the queries, uh, the query that we got from here, and storing it in a variable. Okay, so that's really cool, as you can see. So if we go back here, we can search for anything like uh, sand, sands, whatever, anything like that works, right? So now what we need to do with this, now that we are able to access the search term that the user provided, we can actually put it into here. So now we can have a custom. Um, request every time they search something different so that's really cool I hope this blows your mind like it does blow my mind okay so I just like this This is fun anyway so let's reload here let's actually search flower uh, no we already searched flowers let's search um, gun so let's see what happens so we get a bunch of guns and as you can see it now works it's perfectly um, unique every time they search something right that's really cool as you can see I hope it, I hope you like it so Let's search revolver. That's another type of. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> um, let's search. Um, I guess sand. I guess again. So sand, and then we get a bunch of sand. And let's search one more. Search a girl. And we get a bunch of girls, right? All right. So that's how that works. So we can actually search stuff custom now. 
that's really cool. So one more thing I want to add to make it even more advanced than it could possibly be is make it so we can specify, or the, the person can specify what page they want to search for, okay? Because as you, as you can see, the only thing we can search for is a single page, which is page one. So let's make it so they can search multiple pages if they want to, okay? So let's, let's add another search box here so they can specify what page they want to search on, okay? So let's add that here. Input. We'll copy this whole thing. There we go. So we'll put um, page. Okay. Um, instead of a placeholder, we'll put a value because let's say they don't specify what page. We still want there to be a page value there just in case, basically. So there we go. It says page one. So that will be the default. So they can change that if you want to to like 23. Let's search flower. So uh, flower on page 23 submit and it only shows page one for some reason right so basically we didn't change the code of the route yet we need to change it so we're accessing um, the search term wait no we actually didn't even do that right so what we need to do is set the name of page to also its own uni unique name because what we did here since we copied this one they both had the same name and now whenever we click submit now the name is like all messed up there's two search term variables basically that we're querying with so anyway now it's going to be like this so if we go back here submit it oops let's reload this set it to 12 so now it's search term is equal to sun and page is equal to 12 so that works now so now there are two unique variables that we're passing to our query or our route I guess you could say so now what we can do is go here and access that second variable so page number is equal to request dot query and then we need to get the variable name so as you can see up here it's called page right so page like that so we can access that now and then we can go even further and add that here so search term uh, plus uh, and page is equal to and then we should be able to plug page in just like that and that should do the job correctly. So let's also pass in page number here. So it'll display the page number correctly also. And yeah, so that was a lot. So let's go ahead and reload here. Reload again. Okay, let's do rainbow page uh, 12, I guess. Oh, okay, so we get a problem here. It says page is not defined. Uh, App.js line 41 or something like that. Let's see here. Page. Oh, it's page number, as you can see right here. Page number. Oops. My mistake so let's reload here and now it should work so these are all the pictures on page 12 and then it shows all the pictures on page 12 that's awesome right so let's try page one and boom page one there we go awesome right that's really cool so now they can now the user can specify what they want to search and what page they want to search on so as you can see this is very customizable and we can do a bunch of cool stuff now so basically what you should be able to do now as a programmer is be able to access APIs and get the data from the APIs yourself but now you can allow the user to specify custom search data and access the API themselves basically and then you can specify how you want to display the data that they search for so that just blows my mind so hopefully it blows your mind too and uh, yeah so if you have any questions about what we did because actually that's actually it for this episode if you have any questions about how to access HTTP and APIs and stuff like that, or what we did this episode, just ask a, uh, ask a question, I'll try and help you. And uh, yeah, so also, next episode, we're going to be starting to work with databases, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what we're going to start with, but yeah, stay tuned to see what we're going to work with. And uh, yeah, so if you like the video, leave a like. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Make sure you look in the description for um, our Discord link. Make sure you join our Discord, because we're very lonely in here. We have like 10 people, but they don't really talk that much. Oh, someone just joined. Let's say welcome. Welcome, the wolf. Okay, cool. So, welcome, the wolf. So, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, if you want to join our Discord, make sure you do that. It's very awesome. We're cool. And um, so, also look in the description for all of the code from today's episode. I'll put it right here in the description for you. I'll put this link. So, yeah, make sure you look for that. And uh, yeah, so if you like this episode, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.